Hello. So today has actually been pretty good. I went on my first ever Tinder date four years after installing the app and swiping right for at least 20 minutes a day. We met at Arby's and she told me I looked nothing like my pictures. I ignored her entirely and asked if she liked Smash Bros as I took a disgustingly large bite out of my corned beef sandwich. We didn't talk much after that, but I could tell she was into me because of my unspoken riz. I messaged her for a second date and she hasn't responded, but I'm assuming it's because she's nervous. Man. This must be what it feels like to be an awesome, normally functioning guy. I haven't had a chance to do this until 28 years of age, due to the years of gaming and undiagnosed Asperger's. It kind of makes me feel like a top Smash player. I mean, they have it all. The money, the fans, the hot Smash groupies. I can see why they are all so happy and well-adjusted, but I mean, in reality, they're normal, everyday dudes, just like me. So why do they get to live such lavish lives, as I'm stuck sucking shit from the sewer pipe and picking up crumbs that they leave behind. Well, I thought a good idea would be to do a sort of a case study with top Smash players. And who would be a better patient zero than the greatest of all time himself? Mango. I mean, Mango has spent his whole life playing Smash. He was winning tournaments before he even went through puberty. I wish I could say the same for me, but I'm over a decade past puberty and I still have yet to win a single Smash tournament, or any Smash game for that matter, or be invited to any social gathering where that would occur, or meet friends, or have sex, or kiss a girl or be touched by anyone in any way that resembles affection. I mean, from the start, we all knew Mango had serious talent, but little did anyone know, at the time, that talent would lead him to a life of being the greatest. Tournament after tournament, we can see Mango become unstoppable, playing the best characters in the game and dominating the competition. But as with anyone who excels at a completely worthless talent, the fame would soon get to his head. He would drink profusely at Smash events just to take the edge off of being so good at Super Smash Brothers. Kind of like how I eat candy to take the edge off of how smart I am. Everyone has a vice. Some people like working out, some people love drugs, some people love inviting children into their hotel room for a Smash Bros sleepover, but Mango loved that bottle like Hungrybox loved pale, emaciated e-girls that weren't his girlfriend. And that would prove to not matter at all, as even in a drunken stupor, Mango would still win by throwing people upwards and then up airing immediately after his fox. He rode this high through his late teens into his late twenties, partying, having oodles of sex with mentally ill Smash Bros winches, and even producing a child who will hopefully grow up to do something that isn't this. But much like a GameCube controller being worn down by years of greasy incel ogre finger abuse, Mango would lose steam. Game after game, set after set, would be taken by his rival Smashers, and this once greatest of all time would fall down to his rightfully deserved spot of number 11, being outclassed by newer, younger, more mentally ill talent, and this would all lead up to the most recent Smash Bros debacle, Big House 11. Grand Finals would take place between Mango and Amsa, a person who plays a mid-tier character, and just watching this set made me cringe. So many simple mistakes that could have easily been avoided had Mango just rolled out of the way or used his brain at all. Watching this washed up idiot get annihilated by Yoshi made me hang my head in shame. I thought to myself, if that were me up there, I would be crapping on everyone. But as we all know, Nice guys finish last in every walk of life. I'll never be up there on that stage. Not because my skill isn't there, but because everyone just wants to see an awesome, party-going, sex-having, drunk Chad lose to a mid-tier, while genuinely good players like me are stuck losing to people who are cheating on Slippy. So ask yourselves, this Smash Bros player, is he really who you want to be your goat? This guy is old news. People once thought Tupac and Biggie were the goats of the rap game, but now we see how washed up those old farts really were. We can really see true talent like Lil Yachty and Rod Wave shine through. Well, I think we all learned a valuable lesson from this top player case study. True talent comes from being able to be good at something and not lose to Yoshi. Alright, I'm gonna go see if that girl from Tinder messaged me back within the three minutes it took to record this.